African economies have uh, continued to diversify over the recent years. It's still among the fastest growing in the world. Now, some countries' growth rates have been going well over 7% uh, for a sustained period of time. That represents quite an interesting opportunity for private equity firms to tap into the potential of many in African economy off the back of a rapidly growing and emerging middle class and demand for more quality products. But the goal for many is how to get a successful exit, especially across all 50 plus economies uh, on the continent. So then, let's take a look at trends across the continent, shall we? Anitano Basanjo Adelele is the Director of Research at the African Private Equity and Venture Capital Association. She's live in studio with me tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Emma. Good evening. Very so good to be here with you. 85% of LPs looking at East Africa and saying this is a, the most attractive region we want to put our cash into. But let's take Kenya out of the equation. Mm -hmm. How do they rate the other countries in the region? Very good. So, yes, yeah, so you rightly said, 85% of the LPs that we surveyed chose uh, East Africa as the most attractive region in, on the African continent. Mm -hmm. And Kenya um, maintained its position from last year at second place. But for East Africa, Ethiopia came in at third place. Um, Tanzania and Uganda also registered, with Uganda coming in at ninth place and Tanzania in tenth. Mm -hmm. Now, um, relative to last year, the shifts we've seen are from Tanzania dropping from seventh to tenth. Really? And Uganda gaining one position. Why is Tanzania dropping? Uh, I think there has been a decline in the perception of the business environment in, in Tanzania of recent. Mm -hmm. But it's still there. It's still attractive. But yes, it has, has had a little bit of a dip. Oh. relative to other countries. Um, private equity, though, when we talk about private equity, we see a lot of DFIs being involved, especially in providing capital mm -hmm. um, across the continent. But we don't see that much of the Carlisles, mm. the Black Rocks, uh, these major commercial you know, private equity firms coming into the, into, the, into the mix as well. Pension funds mm -hmm. also pretty much sitting on the sidelines. Why is that? So you're right in that DFIs have been a big factor, a big player in the private equity space. And in fact, typically they are, it's, a, it's, a, it's a feature of African private equity that they have been playing a catalytic role in developing the industry on the continent, and they still continue to do so. But we're finding that increasing, and because the industry is still fairly young on the continent, they are still part and parcel of the industry. And I, I think you, you would be hard push to find an African PE fund that has no private equity participation, um, sorry, DFI participation rather, mm -hmm. in it. But this is changing slowly, but it's changing. Mm -hmm. So what we find is the first time funds will have significantly, mo will be largely invested in by DFIs. And as they raise further funds and they, as they grow, they'll have more and more um, private or uh, commercial LPs, limited partners, invested in their fund. So it will shift from maybe about 80% DFI mm. to about 80% commercial LPs over a period of time. Mm. Um, now, it is changing. It's changing quite slowly on the continent in general. But I have to say, for the, uh, the, on the continent, East Africa is actually somewhat ahead of the curve in comparison to others. And uh, a big part of that has been the fact that the local pension funds are starting to take a take a look into that asset class now and pay, right. so starting reforms, to pay. reforms are clearly bearing fruit yes certainly the reforms that the regulator recently put in are starting to bear fruit it's a slow process but they are starting to bear fruit and they are starting to explore the asset class a lot more right let's talk about north africa because this was a bit surprising an, an increasingly more attractive destination mm -hmm. for a lot of the limited partners um, why is that again let's let's remove egypt out of the picture mm -hmm. because north africa is fairly diverse mm -hmm. What's attractive about North Africa? So in a similar way, so East Africa has been attractive because of the GDP growth, the fast growth. It still remains one of the fastest growing regions in, on, on, in, in the world. And um, in Africa, it's the second, North Africa is the sec has been the second fastest growing region. So again, the LPs have been attracted by this growth. But beyond that, uh, North Africa has some, some characteristics that make it quite appealing. It has a well-established middle class. It has some large consumption market. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know you said taking Egypt out, which is again, a huge, the, the size of the population makes it appealing. But um, again, North Africa has that proximity to, and some very good inroads into the markets of Europe and the Middle East. Yeah. It has a large industrial sector and industrial base, and it's quite advanced in that in that area. So it has those significant features that have uh, drawn the attention of many LPs. Um, Coming back to Kenya, though, the, the, 
granted, we've had a fairly nasty, fairly bruising uh, political season. Has that in any way dampened um, LPs' perception of putting their money into this country? So I think LPs understand that the asset class is a long-term asset class. It's not really the kind of money that comes in today and is out tomorrow. It's not looking for returns over one, two, three months or even one, two, three years. It is a long-term asset class. So we conducted the survey over the period of the summer from about July to late September, early October, which covers the period of the, of the of elections, of, the elections, of <laughs> yeah. course, the run-up into and, and, the, and the election. So um, this clearly did not shift that the appeal of Kenya um, to LPs too much because really they see the potential beyond the short-term period of the political uncertainty that has is, hung is, over. Isn't that a bit over. interesting? Because in the same survey, you've got some LPs saying they're concerned about the length of time that you know it right. takes for, for, for the investments to mature, for them right. to actually be able to exit right. as well. I mean, those two seem to be in a bit of contradiction. Well, no, not not entirely. So they, they do think that, and, but that didn't rank as high as other concerns, mm. but certainly they do see that, and these there's no question that periods of uncertainty do affect the exit environment. Yeah. Um, but again, that's a period of uncertainty that will say will last maybe six months. Uh, has probably lasted for the best part of six months of this mm -hmm. year. That's not insignificant. But um, again, if you're looking over, I'd say a five to seven year horizon, then then you know you're you're looking on the long term. So you still see the potential uh, beyond that six month period. All right, there was something else that really st uh, stood out for me in this survey. Um, for, for a lot of African LPs, Af infrastructure is a place they really want to put mm -hmm. cash into. Um, power, for example, mm. being very attractive. But non-Africa-based LPs, they see things very differently. They mm. want to jump straight into the consumer mm. market. But what explains that difference in approach? Yeah, no, we found that very interesting as well. So, I, I, this, so looking outside from the outside in, uh, the f fact is LPs have the, a perspective of looking at from the outside in, and they are also looking at other markets. So from that viewpoint, you can see why the consumer, the one billion <laughs> people in Africa is what you immediately No matter how fragmented zoom on, it is. Not how, no matter how, how fragmented, but you think the potential for a, a consumer base of about a billion people, you think mm -hmm. that's really the appeal. But from the inside where we experience where these infrastructure gaps are and you yeah. recognize the potential, so very different perspectives clearly and there was that divergence from viewpoints that we, we noted from the LP, LP community. <laughs> All right, we'll have to leave it there unfortunately for the time being. Thank you very much for very your time. Fine. Thank you, it's a pleasure being here. Appreciate it.